our bodies were primed for this part of the world. But as we moved to other parts of the world, as we migrated, just, you know, and, th and this map, I'm going to sit on about this map right here. Uh, we have to remember that Africa, uh, Africans left Africa a long, long time ago, before Africa was Africa. Before, before Australia got all the way where it was, you could walk across. So the world looked a little different during this init initial part of migration. As a matter of fact, um, evidence has started to come out that even before South America broke off, you had, uh, you had people who actually crossed. But as we migrated, we found climates that were uh, giving us much less sun and much less direct sunlight and much less ultraviolet radiation. It's important to understand that because if you really want to understand vitamin D, you have to understand the balance in the skin regarding sunlight. Melanin produces, melanin protects the skin from excess ultraviolet rays. Your skin needs ultraviolet rays to produce vitamin D. Without UV rays, UVB in particular, your skin cannot produce vitamin D. So, when we came up, we were perfectly adapted to produce the right amount of vitamin D to survive where we were. But as we migrated, the, variety, the, the variation in us gave favor to where we were favored before for having darker skin. The lighter skin people became more and more favored the further away they went from the part of the world where we came from. So as you went further and further, you got into the Caucasus Mountains and so on and so forth, you were less favored as a dark-skinned person. Why were you less favored? Because the melanin in your skin, which was your grace here because it was the perfect balance, now became a detriment for you in these regions because why? You had so much melanin in your skin that you completely blocked out the little sun they got. The, the sun was not coming in because of the degree of pigmentation that you had, so your skin was not producing the vitamin D because you had too much pigment. And that's how the, 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 that's how the races um, of the world came about. And this is a, and that, when I first said that to somebody, they were like, what? Racism? But that's, that's the reality of it. If it wasn't for this one compound, there's, there's a lot of compounds out there, there's millions of compounds in the world, and about many vitamins, but this one compound is literally the reason why we have a variety of races, because if it wasn't for the, our need to produce vitamin D, we would, our skin would have never, in other words, you would never have favored certain people to survive in certain regions. So you would have had the same population all throughout the world, we've been dark skin everywhere, right? But because of the varying pigmentation in our, in, our, in our skin, some people were favored in different regions. So the varying ability to efficiently produce sufficient vitamin D is the source of the groupings of humans throughout the world on the basis of the varying degrees of pigmentation. This is a, a, a map produced in 1978 by some Australians who came upon this in an interesting way, but basically they realized uh, that there was a connection between sunlight, the level of sunlight in the different races. It's something that Charles Darwin, if you know anything, if you know much about Darwin, he refuted this. He, you know, because he didn't know what we know now, but he thought there was no connection. He made that statement, but in reality, they proved otherwise. You, you can actually put the map of uh, the, this is a map of the indigenous people from different regions, how dark they are. And obviously we know that the folks who were here are the darkest and the folks who were here are the lightest. is exactly proportional to the amount of uh, ultraviolet rays that come to those regions. It's the exact same map. It's just coming from different sources. So they made that correlation and it was clear. I like this map um, a little bit better. Right, because uh, this is the, we you know, this, this is a map that we've been given you know, all of our lives and coming up in school, making North America, bailing Africa, and you know, making Asia, you know, and, uh, and you know, distorting Greenland. But in reality, we find that Africa is 
we know Africa is the second largest continent. It's almost the same size as um, as Eurasia, which is this this continent here. We don't use terms like Europe for continents because <laughs> it's not a large mass that's surrounded by water, so we know it's not a continent. But you know, it's it's it's, it's uh, the second largest. You actually measure the uh, the area, but it's it's clearly much bigger than. Right, it looks larger, but the area is kind of different because of the way uh, Asia kind of spreads out. And if you consider this part of Asia, that makes a difference too. But the point is that, you know, we need to reorient ourselves in terms of our actual proportion. We talk about a lot of African people. This is what we're talking about. We're not talking about this. Right. So, unfortunately for us, we're in North America. <laughs> so, you can look at this map. Look at where we're optimized as African people to be, and look at where we are. That's really all you need to see to appreciate that we don't get enough sun. Your optimum serum levels of vitamin D <coughs> is, is 18 nanomoles. Serum is basically the amount of vitamin D in your blood. That's what they measure. It doesn't really matter how much vitamin D you take or, you know, where you take it or how you eat it. At the end of the day, you have to have a certain level in your blood. So the, serum, the, 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 the optimum serum level, based on, you know, body function and what we know about of vitamin D, is uh, 80 nanomoles. Now, for black people, unfortunately, in this country, Almost 80% of us are significantly deficient in vitamin D. Almost 80% of us. I mean, the numbers for white people, depending on the population, can range anywhere from 3 to 30. And, and that's 30 is like in the winter time, you know, in you know, the most hospitable places. That's the worst for them. But most of us are walking around with near 80, and some, you know, some numbers are actually higher than that, of us having far less. Um, vitamin D is just basic function. Is that because of lack of supplement or lack of sun exposure? Um, well, I'll, I'll answer that as we go on, but it's, a, it's, it's more sun, but I'll, I'll, I'll give more details on that. First, we want to appreciate why we care about vitamin D. Um, it, it is a vitamin, and we know vitamins are good, but it's, it's more than that. Like I said, it functions in a lot of ways more like a hormone, and it interacts with so many different organs and, and cellular cycles. It's almost a catalyst in some instances regarding uh, calcium. The recent research, back in the days, they used to say, well, you know, vitamin D is important because of what? What was the reason they used to tell us vitamin D was important? Your bones. Your bones. Your bones, your bones and your teeth won't be strong unless you have enough vitamin D. And that's true, just not for us. As black people, we have the highest bone density of anybody, even with the most deficient levels of vitamin D. So for us, that's just not, that's just not true. We may, if, if you have a, a, a deficiency in bone density, um, for black people, we actually find that the vitamin D levels, it can be as low as you can imagine, and their bone density is still far higher genetically. We, our bodies have adapted either to overcome the, the, the deficiencies in, in bone density or just because we're the first people on earth and God made us stronger. Whatever reason it is, our bones are stronger than everybody regardless of our, our level of vitamin D, which is interesting considering how key vitamin D is to building bones. You say that black people's bone density is higher than other races? Anybody else, by far on average, regardless of how much vitamin D um, this person has, and, and most of us in this country have very little. We, we research now linking vitamin D deficiency to heart disease, type 2 diabetes, various cancer. We know that prostate cancer, breast cancer, and colorectal cancer are we can have it in our community. This is, these have now been directly linked to, to vitamin D levels, serum vitamin D levels. Hypertension, heart attack, stroke death. And heart attack and stroke death is, is, uh, is not the degree to which you may have a heart attack or a stroke. Obviously, that's related too because it relates to heart disease, but it's to the degree to which you survive a heart attack or a stroke. 
your chances of surviving heart attack or stroke is far greater the greater the, uh, the level of vitamin D you have in your body. And the research is just pouring out. 